Good morning and welcome to today's products and focus. And very much what all traders are still looking at today is the situation in China and how bad can it really get? What real impact does China have on the rest of the world anyway? Well, that question might be quite obvious, but what we're seeing right now is China is looking to devalue the yuan, which is very much going to give them a competitive advantage in regards to their exports across to the rest of the global economy. And what that does is put a lot of pressure onto a lot of the other neighboring emerging market economies as they then try to compete to make themselves more uh, competitive as well. So it's capital outflow of the emerging markets now that are look at, that's looking to impact the rest of the global economy. So China devaluing the currency, they're trying to support their economy, and that's having a knock-on effect on the other perhaps weaker emerging markets, which do play a very important part in the wider global economy as well. Lots of FX issues as well. Uh, when you look at kind of potential currency wars between countries, if everybody starts to devalue their currency to be competitive, where does it stop? And what you have to think as well is the way how currencies work, one currency is obviously always trading against another. So if you keep on weakening one and then the other person weakens the other one as well, you play this kind of cat and mouse game. And that does have potentially big ramifications for, it, uh, for a lot of the other smaller countries as well. Slowdown in China obviously impacts uh, Europe uh, with Germany obviously getting hit quite hard the last couple of sessions with Monday being quite aggressive. Tuesday was okay, uh, but Wednesday uh, where we are this morning, we're already beginning to see a little bit of a sell-off in, uh, in the kind of the wider European uh, index range, US slowly ticking off as well. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have a quick look at some of the core major products and uh, have a look at the technical levels following on the, the, that, from that news today as well. And the other uh, geopolitical thing to think about, Middle East is obviously still very, very important, but we are, of course, now seeing on the news wires that North Korea have basically come out and said they've done their first miniaturized hydrogen bomb test. And that's caused uh, a lot of condemnation in South Korea, unsurprisingly, and also Japan. So we're looking at the Japan 25 and uh, dollar yen in just a second. But let's have a look at the charts now. So if we keep our, our eye on the US 30, uh, we, you can see that we are now trading below potential support uh, close to 17,050. We have already broken uh, below that this morning. We've obviously not had a close below that with the next potential support at 169. 36. CMC clients are currently 64% long. Uh, so as this begins to sell off, you might notice that more uh, clients will begin to try and pick the bottom of this, uh, of this index. Uh, we're trading below both moving averages. The other technicals are still relatively neutral. Uh, and the reason why we've got this level here at 69.36 is it's the tip of this candle right here. So a, a previous broken resistance now acting as potential support. If we break below that, however, things do get a little bit more dicey and we will be looking at 15,979 as being the next potential support level. Moving on to the UK 100, um, we were in the middle of two ranges yesterday. Uh, you can see by the long tips of these candles that there is buying interest the closer we get to 60.52. Now, we are a little bit away from there right now, and we are off the session lows, but undoubtedly, well, we have a bearish engulfing pattern currently, and this also will be trading below that 21 period SMA. We almost have a de uh, kind of a, a negative cross there on the MACD. The other technicals are relatively neutral. So then moving on to Japan, 225, 58% of clients are currently long. We are firmly below 18,442, which was potential uh, support broken through there on Monday. Um, we tried to break through on Tuesday. As you can see, the tip of the candle ticked above it, but then pushed back down. Um, but we're off the session lows. And we are seeing extra negativity in, in Japan because of that North Korean um, bomb test. It's not really going to have a, a kind of a, a longer term impact on Japan unless there is a breakout of, uh, of hostilities. But as ever, it just means more military spending, more defense for Japan, um, heightens tensions and everything else. And obviously you have people buying the Japanese yen, which is making uh, things, uh, making Japan slightly less uh, competitive in regards to the exports. And obviously China is a big export uh, import area for uh, the Japan region. Longer term potential support, 17,172. So then moving on to, uh, on to dollar yen, 
And you can just see how aggressively this, this has come off. Again, we were down at the potential support, and this is a support from back, back here in March. Uh, we, we have pierced it before, uh, but we've not closed below this level, uh, well, since March last year. So um, many traders will be keeping an eye. It's bounced perfectly off it this morning. Uh, we're about halfway up the, the wick of that candle, but 118 spot 33, that is a potential level to look out for. Death cross on the moving averages. We are obviously oversold on this FX pair, but the signal to buy has not yet been given. And clients by, uh, top clients by position value are currently 67% long. So they're obviously hoping for a turnaround as well. Moving on to West Texas, uh, we are slowly drifting lower towards the bottom end of the range, the 34 spot 26. Um, that is a three, uh, it's not quite three black crows yet. We need uh, three black crows as a technical signal with three quite negative candles. This candle needs to be bigger than this one. Uh, but we're obviously at the bottom end of the range so far this morning. Other technicals are relatively neutral. I think West Texas crude doesn't really know what to do with the Iran Saudi Arabian tensions because they're both oil producers and they're both looking to pump a lot, but they both have a lot to lose if there is a ratcheting up of tensions, i.e. armed conflict. Now, they are obviously already involved in proxy wars in Syria and Yemen, um, but a full-blown conflict between these, between these two, two nations, that would be a bit of a big deal. But interestingly enough, if you look at the client sentiment section, CMC clients are 50-50, okay? So uh, it'd be interesting to see how that pans out. Then moving on to uh, onto gold ever so slightly. Uh, gold has, um, if we actually get my drawing tool out here for a quick second, uh, you can get a bit of a flavor as to the potential resistance, round about 1,087. And uh, we would probably take the tip of this candle here as being, we're still quite range bound basically on, uh, on gold. And uh, we really need to get a, a move beyond 1,087 before we get that little bit more excited. That would be a technical break uh, and also get us above that 55 period SMA. We are seeing three advancing candles right now, which would be quite interesting. It's been a while since we've actually posted three uh, bullish candles in a row. In fact, you'd have to go all the way back to October uh, last year to get a chance to see that. Uh, and that's currently where we are. But we're edging closer. For technical traders, it looks to be that 1,087 is a level to watch out for. And then we finish up with Euro dollar and uh, GBP USD. So Euro dollar broke through that technical support level. We talked about it yesterday, 1 spot 0820, broke through it yesterday. Um, and we are uh, in negative territory again this morning. We had a failure to break higher. We were positive for a very short period of time, only for it then to get pushed down. Currently, CMC clients are 65% uh, net long, uh, net short, sorry. So they're bullish on the US dollar and negative on the euro. And if we then finish up with GBP USD, uh, you can see that we're pretty much bang on one spot, 46.44. This is a very important support level. As you can see, it's from March earlier on this year. We have been lower, um, but this is, a, this is a level that technical traders would be looking at. Uh, because we didn't close below this point. So you always take your furthest, north, your furthest uh, left point in that regard. But we are at the bottom of the range so far. Sterling not doing so good. So if I actually quickly go into my weekly charts for a second, let's find out where the next potential support level is. And you have to go back. You would, yeah, you would, you would pretty much go down to here. Uh, so there could be a lot of further downside. One spot 42.30 should that uh, remain in, in play as well. So. That is a, that's where we are for GBP USD. If I just very quickly bring my market calendar into focus, these are the core economic data releases due today. We do have a PMI, uh, and then you do have trade balance, factory orders, uh, the purchasing managers index PMI, and the petroleum data sales as well. For those of you that are watching in the UK, uh, this is actually 9 a.m. UK time. 1 .30, 3, 3 o'clock and 3.30 because I'm recording this from Germany. Okay, guys, thank you very much for, uh, for your attendance today. I hope you found uh, today's session quite, uh, quite interesting and useful. Lots of very cool technical levels uh, to be aware of. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.